Um, so I'm going to just take a minute or two just to give you a little introduction to Soam Woods, and then we're not going to stand still and talk. We're going to walk since it's chilly. Um, but so Soam's Woods is 12 acres of land that was preserved back in 2006. It was a four-year, $2 million campaign to save this land. And if you look at this sign up here, though fading, and we probably need to restore it, um, there are a number of partners who helped make that happen. There was you know, the state involved, the town was involved, um, the Nature Conservancy, and also very importantly, the Poconoke tribe of the Wampanoag Nation. And in fact, the seven trails on this property are each marked in a different color. And those colors are the colors that are on the rainbow shield of the Poconoke flag, and uh, of the Poconoke tribe rather. And so it's it's symbolic as we go through these trails. Um, the other thing that's just kind of neat to know about this property, at least as Laura would have it, is that this is a very special place for women, and uh, that's because uh, according to Poconoke lore. Um, this was a place where women came for birthing, and they also came to have a little place to get away once a month, to be together, when they really didn't really want to be around all the men folk. And so it's a place of peace and solitude and restoration, and it, so as you walk through these beautiful trails, think about that, and that it is kind of special that a place has been preserved that was a special place for uh, indigenous women. So we're going to um, start, the, the path we're going to start on, and this is going to be interesting to see, has, uh, has anyone walked the trails yet? Did you see any tracks? I didn't walk them, but I, so I don't, I don't know, but I haven't seen anybody walk them since I've been here. <laughs> yeah, so we might get first tracks, which is very exciting. Um, so the, the, this is, uh, uh, this is the, the map, and we are going to be um, starting here on the Jenks Trail. Jenks is one of the original landowners of the property after the indigenous people. Um, and the property was also owned at one point by the Rhode Island Country Club over there. And uh, as, as we go through some of the trails, we're going to go through the Jenks Trail, we're going to go around the Rustic Trail, we're going to go down to where there's a vernal pool, which is going to be covered with snow right now, but I can tell you it was wet a few days ago. Um, and then we're going to go along the Walnut Grove Trail, and just to be aware that some Many years ago, more than a hundred years ago, there was a walnut grove here, and um, the Rhode Island Country Club, um, when they owned the land, they decided they wanted to plant red pine, and so the walnut trees um, came down, the red pines went up, but there's an interesting thing about uh, walnut trees as a protective mechanism, they emit a chemical, um, naturally occurring chemical, that kills things around their base to keep other plants from growing up. I know I had one in my backyard once. <laughs> and yes, you did. You've seen you've seen the action. And and so uh, what happened when the red pines were planted in place of the walnuts? Um, they developed red pine scale, and over, over time they died, fell over, died. And what's happened is in their place, white pines have kind of risen up to take their place and seem to be doing very well now. So anyway, let's let's go for no walnut trees. <laughs> Ellen, was it right up there where we saw the raccoon on Saturday? There, I don't know where you saw the raccoon on Saturday. I saw the raccoon a little bit further you down did. the trail one okay. time. Okay. Um, so so you're I'm not the, sure. But we've got trail markings here. So this is the red trail. The Jenks trail. Oh, we've got tracks, but they're not human tracks. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, it could be a dog, but it could be coyote. Or it could be deer. Yeah. Ellen, these tracks here, what's your guess? Dog? They'd, I don't see human tracks with them, so could it be deer, coyote? Let me just go down a little bit. To where it or a small person? I don't think it's deer. I think thinking... It would be more than one. Yeah, either, but deer has a, a, is larger. Yeah, um, and um, I'm thinking probably dog. Probably would be my dog. Guess. Yeah, with with a very dainty 
Yeah, a small with the dog. Yeah. <laughs> two two small dogs. Two small dogs. <laughs> no matter. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe record. You know, I, there's, a, there's a chart on if you can get if you Google right. animal track. A mocker nut hickory. Who has marked the trees? Uh, the land trust does that. Oh, good. That's very nice. The trail mark. I, I'm oh, the, oh, the trail with the tree uh, plaques? The yeah, the plaques. The tree plaques, yeah, the land trust did that. Yeah, great. Yeah. It's, and it's really helpful in this season where it, it's it's a lot easier in the spring. I can pull out my iNaturalist <laughs> app and see, well, what kind of tree is that? So I'm really grateful when there's an actual plaque on it that helps me get to understand what a tree looks like in the winter time. Yeah, so we had an arborist come through and help us with this. <laughs> I was going to say that... Well, you know, this is sort of the the Robert Frost, two roads diverged in a yellow wood and wishing I could travel both and be one traveler. Well, we have three from up here, but we're going to go left here. Um, yeah, if that's all right, because it's like, you know, it's, or just any. I just, just because that light. <laughs> hey guys, fine, you're supposed to be in the picture. <laughs> Come on, this is a group picture. Group picture, group picture. You two, Dave. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. With any luck, we'll find the cutoff. Someone's pricking. That's actually a trail that the neighbors have made. That we, we try to discourage, but we have had absolutely no luck discouraging that trail. Which is uh, for the Vernal Spring. Uh, do you know what Vernal means? But if you look at a thousand feet out, it's possible that, you know, as we carve up our landscape into house lots, that's what makes it tough for some of these animals to survive because they have the pool but they don't have the surrounding area that they need in order to survive. So that's one of the things that makes this place really special. That and the fact that it is absolutely beautiful to see a vernal pool that is wet in winter. And in the spring it is alive with people. Yes. The peepers kind of come alive at different times at different times in the spring. I, I read that and I was, wasn't sure if it was so, but, but so that you have more than one shot at the scene. It's nice that there are so many larger trees. <laughs> We have to dispel people of the notion that this was all virgin forest with huge trees here because right. the tribe regularly burned off much of the area. Oh, That's correct. Really? It was, it, it, I mean, from what I've read, and, and you might know better than me, Dave, but that or Ellen, that during the time of the Poconocket, it was more of a field than it was a forest. Right. Well, and did they have, like, pl plants that they were growing or just... Well, to help the deer? Or? About a thousand years ago, they started growing corn. It was a relatively recent uh, invention. And to grow corn, you have to have open fields. So that's when they began burning off the area. But it, they would burn off even the forested areas to uh, take care of the underbrush. Mm -hmm. So the larger trees, well, mm -hmm. bigger than any of these, mm -hmm. would survive for a hundred years or more. Uh, but the smaller underbrush mm -hmm. stuff would all burn off. So it was like a park. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the English loved it because they said, oh, this is just what we're looking for. Right. This is just mm -hmm. like England. Yes. And you can ride your horses through <laughs> so, wow. without any problem. So, yeah. you know, I, I at first thought this must all be virgin forest, but chances are pretty good that all of this at one time or another was either burned to the uh, to clear it or uh, the colonists uh, used their axes liberally <laughs> and cut just about everything so yeah. it's 
uh, with a couple of exceptions. There's one place down in uh, Portsmouth yes. that claims to be, you know that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, virgin forest. But everything else has been cut probably several times in the last couple hundred years. That, well, yes, and, and we've seen evidence of that even, you know, here with the walnut trees and then the red pines and, and the white pines growing up. It is sort of a testament to nature as to how quickly things can recover yes. uh, if you let them. If you'd like to have a map to take home with you, feel free to take one. Yeah, there is a map online, yeah. but it's not this not one. Not this one? So okay. I'm gonna make I will take one then. Those, those trees there with the snow so coming pretty. down. It, it is pretty. pretty. Yeah. 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 It feels like it's snowy even though it's not. I know. <laughs> that is lovely. We have about 84. Uh, some of them are larger, like Soames Woods or Johannes, uh, which is 33 acres. Mm. And some of them are little tiny corners of property. Um, and we're, believe it or not, you know, there's still more property out there that can be saved. We're in the process right now of looking at several properties mm. that people are looking at donating to us that would help us um, create contiguous areas of open space, you know, properties that are especially valuable are those that are already attached to open space or that would create important habitats um, for plants and animals or just create, you know, peaceful open space for the humans that live nearby. Which is the largest? Uh, Johannes is the largest of the properties and uh, that was a big project. Mm. Well, we'll be doing another walk there. How about too. the Rainer property? I think that's the, what it's that called. is actually owned by the town, oh. um, and it is the and the, the trust is very involved in the management of the property, along mm. with other organizations that have mm. uh, an interest in the property. And so it's kind of a group effort. Um, okay. And it, am I phrasing that correctly, Ellen? You know. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, there there are a number of properties which are town owned, where the trust's volunteers are integral in mm. maintaining the properties mm -hmm. because um, we have volunteer power, mm. and uh, and we have the knowledge of how to do that, and mm. so um, it saves the town a lot of money, frankly, yeah, um, yeah. and it enables us enables the town to preserve more land that they might otherwise preserve. Mm. So. Um, Okay, I hope everybody's getting a picture to take home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a golden. He's 70-some right. pounds. Mm -hmm. But I worry about him because I've seen three coyotes go through, and he yeah. can't handle three coyotes. Yeah, I, I have seen um, at one of the most beautiful scenes I've seen. I live on the edge of 100 Acre Cove, mm -hmm. and uh, two or three winters ago, when it was cold enough where the co cove was completely frozen over, mm -hmm. I saw three coyotes loping down across the cove, basically heading toward town. I'm thinking, what are you going for coffee or something? <laughs> but it was just an amazing sight. I felt like I was in the Alaskan tundra um, to be able to see three wild creatures in the middle of this huge frozen um, cove. It was it was kind of amazing. They're absolutely beautiful. They're so healthy looking. <laughs> they are. Well, you know, they, I think that we are beginning to have um, some balance of our ecosystem coming back um, with you don't want to have all prey and no predators. Mm. Right. Um, I'm sure sure they, has they, has anyone ever read Bar Barbara Kingsolver books? Barbara Kingsolver? Um, I was just going to say something about the coyotes. I have seen a fair amount of evidence that coyotes are hunting in these woods. So I don't, if, if I had a dog, which I don't currently, but if I had a dog, I would not bring the dog in here. Yeah. Just because there's just too much evidence of coyotes being very active. Yeah. Well, and and dogs should, uh, if you do bring your dog, you must be on a leash here, at, at for their safety and also for safety of other people who may or may not be as comfortable with dogs. Um, but if 
you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think when a dog is on a leash, an, a, another animal perceives you to be more of a connected being when you're together, um, and and so that's a little safer for the dog. I think so. The spur? Yes. Yes, okay. I, every time I get to this point, I always want to go that way, but you've got to go this way to go that way to, so we can take you up to the ridge trail. This is where the um, horned owl was spotted. And over on the far side over there, along um, South Lake Drive, the closed South Lake Drive, there's a herring run uh, that... Do they actually run? <laughs> the, uh, the, yes, the DEM, the Department of Environmental yeah. Management, installed it, um, I guess, or they replaced it uh, a yeah. little while ago. Is that fish ladders they put in? Yeah, there are fish yeah. ladders, but there's a, uh, or a herring run. I don't herring know what the run. difference is between a herring run and fish ladders, but the herring definitely need to go up to get yeah. to where they're going. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. It's it's as it's like God's own ornament on the tree. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love the winter walkers. <laughs> it's funny they like to be all together. This makes me so happy, honestly, looking back and seeing all these like happy faces against the snow. Oh, yeah. There are all these blueberry trees which we could not see because they are covered with briars. And so high school students need to do community service and other organizations like to do community service too. So they were looking to the land trust and I said, let's, let's get all those briars off of the blueberry trees. So we spent like a morning doing that with a bunch of kids. It was a lot of fun. And, um, and the blueberry trees are just beautiful now. And, and they're big. I was surprised when Ellen pointed them out to me the first time. Yeah. They're they're yeah. really uh, like little trees. Yeah. I mean, this summer wasn't a great summer for growing blueberries because it was really dry. But yeah. um, in the future, if they're going to be, but they're just beautiful, and you can finally see them. That's great. Wonderful. This is a really nice one for families with kids. Like it's a great training ground for little hikers mm -hmm. <laughs> to learn how to be in the woods. This used to be South Lake Drive. This is the road that was closed off by the town, and it's now a beautiful walking trail. The land trust property ends here. Um, but if anyone is, wants to have a longer walk and more time outside, um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back home. But you are welcome to walk down South Lake Drive, come back, walk through the trails again. You know, and, and maybe even with the quiet or the quiet of aloneness, you might even. And just to introduce folks to these beautiful places um, that are, are right here, that but a little off the beaten path and mm -hmm. not necessarily well signed, which is probably okay because I feel yeah. like now I have you folks, you all know where it is, and, and you're all great stewards of the land, and so you would introduce other nice people. Oh, all my <laughs> life I've been saying Osamaquin. Yeah. So and, I and said Osamiquin. I would have. Osamiquin. Osamiquin. This is, this, I'm just hearing that this is the more correct pronunciation but um, so that is also town-owned land and the Barrington Garden Club has um, a big role in the management of that property which is some of the trails are now that's becoming wet and so there's going to need to be a big group effort in the years ahead to um, to look at that trail system and make sure that the trails aren't in wet habitats, both for obviously the comfort of walkers, but for the the habitats that are there. And so it's it's just it's one of those properties where we're really seeing the effects of climate change. And so we're looking at doing that kind of thing at the land trust. We're seeking grants and funding to try and install some of those types of things because Coast Snap is the name of the unit that 
is doing it. Uh, and it's through URI. It's, um, it's a great project. And there are a couple of other ones that are out there that we're looking at uh, because uh, we want to not only just do coastal areas, but we also want to do some of our inland areas to observe the change of land. So it's woods, come Thank back, you. bring friends, enjoy the walk down there, or get on home to hot chocolate, whatever, whatever suits you. So. And bye-bye.